Why is the ginger at Aldi so good? Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. Pretty good. Today on the show, I'm gonna make the Chinese cooking demystified version of Shundi Kanji, which is, I highly recommend that YouTube channel. I really love their content. They describe this as one of the most famous regional styles of kanji in China that is also easy to make. And I was like, ah, well, I can make easy things. So that's what we're gonna make today. Kanji is a rice porridge, and uh, we're gonna make the pork meatball version. And most of the kanji that I have made in the past has been like, throw a chicken carcass and some rice in a pot and just cook the hell out of it. If you wanna see that video, here it is. So the designator from this style, as opposed to other ones, like I said, I have like, throw the chicken in with the rice, cook it forever. In this version, you prepare the uh, porridge and then you actually, once the porridge is finished, cook what you're gonna put, ultimately serve it with. So we're gonna cook the porridge and then cook our pork meatballs briefly, you know, in the residual heat. So the first thing we're gonna do is marinate our rice. We're gonna use a specific type of rice, which is broken rice. Broken rice. I really don't know what marinating does, but I'm, I'm following directions. All right, it says 80 grams. It's not very much at all. That's 100 grams right there. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna make a double batch. Okay, and we are going to marinate this with peanut oil and salt. I'm very interested to learn what that does. So that's way more oil than I was supposed to use, but it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. All right, so we'll mix it up and we'll set it aside. All right, so while that's marinating, we're gonna start working on our pork. So we're gonna grind meat today, which is a, you definitely don't need to do that for this. However, the recipe suggests using ground pork uh, using a fattier piece of pork, such as pork shoulder, and I have some uh, pork shoulder steaks from the farm. All right, so let's get working on the pork. I just have a KitchenAid meat grinder, but it should certainly do the job today. These uh, blade steaks do have a bone in them, so we'll have to cut that out, but no problem. So basically it's like a pork shoulder that's been thinly sliced, and that's the kind of T-bone that you pull out. And so generally, like when grinding meat, you're gonna have to cut it up into pieces anyways. Um, this is certainly true for the wee little KitchenAid grinder. I'll be back in a second after I finish cutting these bones out. All right, it's been a while since I've done this. Here's the meat, it's cut into pieces. So I, I put it in small pieces because it gotta go in here. And we'll put it in and yeah, let it run through the plunger. You know, it's best to like have all the parts very cold to get a better grind, but I just don't feel like it matters for today's purposes. Meaty. Uh, so I'm using a thick grind today because we're gonna chop it up some more when we're done. Yeah, feel, feel free to put in uh, fart sounds, John. That's, that's really what we're dealing with here is farty meat. This is about a pound of meat. Uh, isn't that appetizing? But now that uh, now that I'm doing this, I might grind meat more often because this is, this is uh, going swimmingly. And I think we're done. So we gotta let it work its way out. Okay, that was easy. I had a little bit of dread about that. Now I don't. Is done. Okay, let's get that porridge going. So we are doing a one to 16 ratio of water to rice, but we're not gonna be as precise. The uh, YouTube channel was, uh, they were joking about it, that they're crazy people. So they, for the 80 grams of rice, they used 1.28 liters. And they're like, it's okay if you use 1.3. So, th <laughs> okay, there's the 0 0.02 the <laughs> adjustment. So we're gonna use 2.6 liters, so we're gonna double batch. See if I can pour it in the pot this time. I'm learning! Should take a note from my son, he loves to pour things. Does he do a good job? He's actually pretty amazing at it for his age. Better than you? Well, that's <laughs> I've got a few more, I've got a few more years of experience than he does. Do you think you're good at pouring for your age? Yeah, yeah I do. All right, so we're gonna turn the water on, turn the water on. All right, so I got some ginger here. I'm gonna use about a centimeter piece. I don't know what a centimeter is, because I'm American. What the f is a kilometer? If, if one single person tells me to peel the ginger with a spoon, um, I will commit to never using a spoon to peel ginger again, which is uh, no change from my current stance on it. Okay, here's ginger, we're gonna crush it. Boom, never done that before. We're just gonna pop it in. All right, white pepper. And I was excited because I found a white peppercorn grinder. Lee Kum Kee. So that's what we're gonna use. We're gonna use uh, just a bit of that. All right, I feel silly buying this, but the optional ingredient is dried shrimp. And we're just gonna throw in a couple to start building the umami base. These are the cheapest ones I could find. 
I'm just gonna use a pinch. Okay, so a lot of times in Chinese recipes, you will see them chopping pork with a cleaver. And I, um, I do have a cleaver somewhere. I have no idea where it is, but I'm gonna try to replicate uh, what I've seen them do, which is basically you like vigorously chop the uh, the uh, pork, keeping it on the board. And this is all a textural thing. I think like what you're trying to do is create uh, streakiness. So it's like almost like a finer mince. And you can see even just like chopping it a little bit as I like smear it, there's more and more streakiness in the meat. So basically it's like chop this up for a couple of minutes. And that's what I'm gonna do for a couple of minutes. So I'm gonna keep moving around and chopping it up. And then we're gonna stir it in one direction only. I'm really curious to see if that really makes a difference or not. I am satisfied with the amount of chopping I did. I'm gonna transfer our pork back to the bowl and we will add our seasoning. And actually our, um, our water is boiling now so we can get our rice in. Give it a stir and then once it's back up to a large boil, we will turn the heat down a little bit. Uh, I did see a trick in the video which is if you want to prevent it from overboiling, you can put a chopstick to prop the lid open. I think I might not need to because my lid is vented. So we'll, we'll monitor that. If it starts boiling over, we know what to do. Pink. <laughs> that's right. But actually, yeah, that's what, that is what exactly what we'll do. Okay, uh, let's season up. I'm gonna add some white pepper again. Add some salt. And I've got a fresh pouch of MSG. Yeah, that's <laughs> the good stuff. So we'll just add a couple pinches of that. I'm gonna add some soy sauce. Some Shaoxing wine. Bloop. And some cornstarch. Quite a bit of cornstarch. I hope this is cornstarch, it's not uh, labeled. It's, it's probably cornstarch. <laughs> Stir in one direction only. This sounds so goofy. I am gonna glove it this time. All right, so we're stirring in one direction. I'm gonna mix it, incorporate the ingredients first and then go in one direction only, which is really hard in this bowl. God damn it. One direction only. They said this was easy, <laughs> John. They lied to me. And then uh, we're gonna give it a drizzle of peanut oil on the whole thing. That was kind of more than a drizzle. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Okay, there we go. All right, so our porridge is bubbling. Let's go take a look. We're bubbling, but we're not, we're not overboiling. So maybe it's fine. Let's uh, check it in 25 minutes. I'm gonna give it a quick stir because I just want to see what's going on. Also, I'm glad I made a double batch. Like, I know this will expand, but I think it was the right call. We'll be back. All right, so hubris on my end. Check it out, it is basically boiling over. Those crazy bubbles. Ooh. So let's do the chopstick. Yeah, perfect. Hey, look, it's, it's like completely resolved that issue. It's like they knew what they were doing. <laughs> okay, so we let it go a little bit longer. It took us 35 minutes. You can see we're starting to get pretty creamy. Pretty creamy, still some thinness. It could keep going, honestly, but everyone's hungry, so I'm just gonna stop here. So that's my texture, medium thick. So let's drop our meatballs. I turned the heat off. I'm just gonna use a spoon, a Chinese spoon. Just drop little balls of meat into the pot. And once we drop all of our pork in, I'm gonna bring it back up to a boil, shut the heat off, and let them gently cook in the rice porridge. I also kind of think might be too much pork, but we are hungry, so it, uh, it shan't go to waste. Also, I'm not um, I'm not worried about these being like ball shaped. Personally, I think it'll cook just fine. I'm almost done. All right, so here's my meaty porridge. It's like way more meat probably than is normal, but that's fine. And uh, off camera, I checked some of the pork out because I wanted to see if it was done or not. It was pretty done. Also, we will have enough food for everyone to, to eat. It's So it's thinner than what I'm used to, but it's pretty thick. So I'd, I'd say that's a nice medium. And then we're gonna finish with some cilantro and a scallion. And I will try it just like that before adding additional toppings. Well, you can add soy sauce, you can add chicken bouillon. It would be more typical to use Chinese uh, chicken bouillon, but I didn't feel like buying another chicken bouillon. More white pepper, MSG if you want, but let's give this a try. I'm sure it's way too hot to eat. Probably gonna burn the hell out of my mouth. Mmm. That's actually really, really good. And it's really, it's pretty significantly different from what I'm used to. Like there's no chicken flavor whatsoever, but the ginger and some of that pork flavor definitely comes through. Let's try a bit of my pork. Huh, that tastes like so much different than I expected it to taste. 
It's really quite good. It has a good umami. The, uh, I think the Shaoxing wine kind of comes through from the pork. Wow, that's like way more flavorful and more different than, than I would have expected. I'll also say that like, it definitely needs more salt in my opinion. So I'll be adding salty things. Uh, a little bit of soy sauce, just a little bit. And you know, kanji is not something that's pretty to photograph, I don't think. Wow, that's really good, really interesting. And I'm gonna probably throw a bunch of chili oil on it because I like that. All right, well that was that was fun. We're all starving, so we gotta go eat now. Thanks for watching the show. I'm trying to talk a little quietly because my son is napping, and that's how you do it. See you next time. Bye. -bye.